The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The desires of the heart are as crooked as corkscrews, said the late W.H. Orton. He may have had love in mind, or hatred, or just about any emotion we're capable of, for the observation applies to them all. And considering how devious our desires can be, it would behoove us to be always on our guard, even with those closest to us. On the other hand, without trust, we would all go mad. A perplexing dilemma, and one that surfaces one way or another almost every day of our lives. Eleanor, what are you doing here? You know very well why I've come. No. I know what you tried to do, Bert. What are you talking about? Don't play innocent with me. I have proof. Proof? Where? What? In, in my mind. My memory. I, I, I remember what happened. And I know you'll try to do it again, won't you? Won't you? Our mystery drama, Complete Recovery, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Percy Granger. It stars Mary Jane Higby. I'll be back shortly with Act One. James was once discussing the sound of the English language, and he maintained that our loveliest sounding phrase, irrespective of meaning, was summer afternoon. Summer afternoon. It does sound nice, and its meaning has pleasant connotations, too, but not for Eleanor Houston, a wealthy and once very outspoken widow. To her, summer afternoons have become nightmares. We're in a sanatorium in a Gulf Coast city in the Deep South. Oh, Doctor. Oh, yes, Miss Carter? Would you hold the door for me while I wheel Mrs. Houston out onto the sun porch? Oh, surely. Oh, thank you. Here we are, Mrs. Houston. Another beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky. Why are you taking me outside again? Understand, I don't want to go out. Let's park her over near the edge where she can feel the breeze coming in off the gulf. Mm. How is she today? Uh, the same. Still no sound and no movement. It gives me a headache. The sky. I can't stand all that blue. We've had her under treatment and observation for six months, and there's not a thing in the world wrong with her, physically. The fractured ankle she suffered from that hit-and-run driver is all healed, yet she seems totally paralyzed. Oh, here we are. I talk to her constantly. You know, I almost think she can hear me. Sometimes she even looks as if she's going to respond, and then nothing... Of course I can hear you. Don't leave me here. Oh, my head is throbbing. The blue sky is making it hurt. I'd rather die than endure this. Oh, you're going away. Don't leave me here. If only there was some way to get through to her. I'm convinced she is using this paralysis as a defense. She's... She's afraid of something. You can see it in her eyes. Something she doesn't want to face. You don't think it's just the trauma of the accident? No, it's got to be more than that. Otherwise, why wouldn't she want to recover? Doctor, look. Her hand. I think she moved it. Keep your voice down. Don't startle her. There. You see? Yeah. Yeah, she's trying to wheel herself forward. (gasps) No! She's rolling straight towards the fire escape. Uh, Stop her. Stop her, nurse. I can't. She's going over. Pulse? 
normal. Blood pressure? Back up to normal. How's she breathing? Well, it's very regular. Almost peaceful. It's a miracle she didn't break her neck falling down those fire escape stairs. Except for the bump she took on her head. She seems fine. Uh, oh, did you call her daughter and son-in-law? Yes. They're down at the nurse station. Doctor. Yes, nurse. Uh, what, doctor? Doctor. Well, what do you want? I-, I didn't say anything. Where am I? Doctor. It's Mrs. Houston. Is this a hospital? Oh, she's talking. Of course I'm talking. What am I doing in this bed? You don't remember, Mrs. Houston? Of course I remember. I remember I was downtown shopping for a dress for the spring cotillion. And I remember my daughter Rita thought it was foolish for someone my age to still be going to dance. Is that the last thing you can recall? Now, stop this interrogation and tell me what happened. You were struck by a hit-and-run driver. Oh, really? How extraordinary. You've been here for six months, Mrs. Houston. Six months? I insist you let me go at once. You'll have to stay for a few more days until we can run tests to make sure you're really fully recovered. Uh, Doctor, should I get Mrs. Houston's daughter? My daughter? Is Rita here? Yes, she's outside with her husband. Oh, him. Why are they here? Why don't we get them for you? I'm, I'm sure they'll both be happy to see how much better you are. Hmm? Why didn't you tell Mrs. Houston the whole story? And risk having her go back into shock? Well, she doesn't remember a thing from the time of her first accident. Evidently, the bump she took on her head this afternoon has knocked out all memory of the past six months, including whatever fear it was that was keeping her paralyzed. Dr. James. Oh, uh, Mrs. Riley, there you are. Is Mom all right? We came as soon as you called. No broken bones. Oh, hello, Mr. Riley. No, no. In fact, something very interesting has happened. The paralysis is gone. You mean she can move? And talk. She seems completely recovered. Well, I don't understand how that's possible. Well, as you know, it's been my contention all along that Mrs. Houston was suffering from what uh, psychiatrists call a conversion reaction. Uh, That is, she converted some mental trauma, probably connected with the car accident, into a physical symptom, the paralysis. Subconsciously, she preferred that to confronting the trauma. Bert, do you hear that? Mama's better. Isn't that wonderful? Doctor, can we go see her? Oh, of course. Mama, Rita, tell them to let me out of here. Oh, Mama, you're all better. Hello, Mother Houston. Now, I've told you a hundred times, Bert Riley, not to call me that. Just because you're married to my daughter, that does not make you part of our family. Mm. I'm happy to see you seem to be your old self. Well, there's no seams about it. I'm fit as a fiddle. And I want to go home to Amber Oaks at once. Oh, Well, what's the matter? Well, um, I'm afraid the house has been sold. (gasps) What? Mama, it it was so big and and so expensive. Amber Oaks is my home. Our family home. The doctors didn't think there was much hope of your ever recovering. Who gave you the right to sell it? Well, the court did. The court? What business it is of theirs? Well, Bert was appointed trustee for the state, Mama, because of your condition. He is a lawyer. Of course, if you're fully recovered, everything will be turned back over to you. If I'm recovered, of course I'm recovered. What about Amber Oaks? We can get you a real nice apartment here in town. And the money you made by selling it? What have you done with it? It's all been soundly invested. I want to see the papers. I want to see everything. Please don't get mad, Mama. Everything is all right. Bert only did what he saw fit. Of course. Only what he saw fit. Well, Mrs. Houston, the diagnostic tests were all negative. We can release you today. It's about time. There's uh, 
One thing, though, I think we ought to discuss before you go. You mean that nonsense about my having been psychologically paralyzed? Mrs. Houston, it could be quite serious. Why? You just said my recovery was complete. Yes, but whatever caused your fear is still there. Even though you have no conscious recollection of the past six months, at any moment, something could trigger a relapse. Uh, what could? Almost anything about word, a smell, a thought, something you see. Mrs. Houston, there is something inside you that could kill you. Something you're so terrified of, you've blocked it from your conscious mind. I'm not afraid of anything, Doctor. I've never been afraid of anything in my life. And I certainly have never been terrified. And you see, Mama, you have a terrace that looks out over the park. When the rain stops, we can go out there. And there's a full-size kitchen and a separate dining room. <laughs> a full-size kitchen? Why, the kitchen at Amber Oaks was as big as this whole apartment. I am sorry about Amber Oaks. But Bert thought... Don't tell me what Bert thought. I know better than you what goes through that mercenary head of his. An apartment. Well, we can fix it up nice. Now, well, what's this room for? Oh, that's the surprise I told you about. Amber Oaks is gone, but I found someone who's going to make you feel at home. Mrs. Collins, you can come out now. Hello, Mrs. H. Amy, our old cook. I called her yesterday, and she agreed to come live here and work for you just like before. Oh, Mama, what's the matter? Oh, why? Mrs. H, what's wrong? Ma, Mama! Oh, she fainted. I don't know what happened, Dr. James. She just passed out. Oh, where is she now? We got her into the bedroom over there. Oh, good. Now, you, you wait out here. Let, let me see her alone. Mrs. Houston? What? Oh, it's you. Rita calls me... Can you tell me what happened? Well, I don't know. Rita was showing me this ghastly apartment and Amy appeared. Amy? Oh, Mrs. Collins. She was my cook at Amber Oaks. Rita's hired her to live in here with me. Oh, yes, yes, I saw her in the kitchen just now. Uh, it was Mrs. Collins then. Then what? Who brought on your fainting spell. The oh, fainting. not at all. Her cooking is excellent. Hmm. It's like a tomb in here with the curtains drawn. We ought to get some fresh air. Rain stopped. The sun is out. Ah, there. Now, Mrs. Houston, try to remember what was the last thing... Oh, what, what's the matter? Oh, the sky. Please, please pull the drapes. The, the sky? Blue, blue. Blue, I, I can't stand blue. Please pull the drapes. Right here. Oh. Oh, that's better. Blue. Is that it, then? I, I, I don't know. Mrs. Collins was wearing a blue uniform. I, I didn't notice. Think, Mrs. Houston. No. Why didn't you want to recover? Why did you want to remain oh, paralyzed? Oh, leave me Do alone. You, you deliberately tried to kill yourself. What? Your accident two days ago on the sun porch was no accident. Both the nurse and I saw you trip the brake. The sun porch? You tried to kill yourself, Mrs. Houston. Now, what is it you're afraid of? The sky. The color blue. No, it's, it's not the color blue. That's only the association. What is the truth, Mrs. Houston? What are you terrified of? What don't you want to face? Nothing. Nothing terrifies me, Doctor. I'm not afraid of anything. The essence of man, said a great mystic philosopher, is the effort he makes not to die, to persist in his own being. This effort can take many forms. 
from the building of empires to the procreation of children. It can also take the form of throwing up psychological barriers against certain truths, truths which are so painful or dangerous that we dare not confront them. I'll return shortly with Act Two. There's a lot written these days about how we can all be our own best friends. Would you say that Eleanor Houston is following this advice? She's evidently wrestling with some demon in her subconscious, and according to Dr. James, she was even prepared to kill herself in order to escape that demon. If he is correct, then it must be a terrible thing indeed that she knows and wants to forget. How's Mama, Doctor? Is she going to be okay? For the time being, yes. But for how long, I, I can't say. She might just as well have a time bomb inside her, yet she refuses to admit it's there at all. Well, at least I found out what it was that caused her to faint. Blue. Blue what? Just blue. The color blue. Sky blue, to be exact. Like Mrs. Collins' uniform. Yes. Yeah. Why should a color upset Mama so? Well, I imagine it's associated with her first accident in some way. Can you remember the day at all? Well, was the weather clear? No. I think it was overcast. The rains came up from the Gulf about six. Mm -hmm. Though what about the dress she was wearing? It was a flower print, not blue. Yeah. Yeah, this is pointless. It could be any one of a thousand different things. But we've got to find the exact association and why it terrifies her so we can take the steps to diffuse it. Otherwise, she could have a complete relapse, or worse, at any time. Is there anything I can do? Mm. For the time being, I suggest you get her a pair of sunglasses. She thinks sunglasses look cheap. She'll never wear them. Well, she has to, Rita. She has to. How are you feeling now, Mrs. H? Oh, I'm all right. Is Rita still here? No, she's gone home. I brought you some lentil soup. Just set it down. No, I won't just set it down. You're going to drink it. <laughs> Are you going to start bossing me around again? Well, you're no good to yourself on an empty stomach. All right, all right. Give me the silly thing. Now, you know you'd like it. My Matt, God rest his soul, said it was a meal in itself. <laughs> Mrs. H! Oh, my head. What is it? Uh, stay away from me. Now, don't you move. Uh, I'll get something to clean up that soup. I'll just use a towel here from the bathroom. Now, don't you worry about a thing. I'll have you clean in a jiffy. Mrs. H. Mrs. H. Where are you? Why, she's gone. Dr. Jenkins. Mrs. Houston, what are you doing out of bed? I've got to talk to you. Of course. I know what it is. The thing I've been trying to suppress. I know why I kept myself paralyzed. Why? Because I knew if I recovered that I would die. And die for good this time. Uh, I, I don't follow you. That uh, accident when I was hit by that car? That was no accident at all. It was deliberate. Someone was trying to murder me. Mrs. Houston, I, how do you know that? Blue. Sky blue. That was the color of the car that struck me. I turned my head at the last moment. I, I, I said something was wrong. And I saw the car. But why do you think it was deliberate? Because of the license plate. The license plate? It was one of those, oh, what do you call them? Those vanity plates. It, it wasn't the usual series of numbers, but a name. A man's name, Matt. Well, now, are you certain? Oh, all this must have happened very quickly. Doctor, Mrs. Collins, our cook. She owns a sky blue sedan. Yes, Rita told me it was her favorite color. Her husband was one of our gardeners. He died two years ago. 
and in his memory she got plates for her car with his name on them, and his name, Doctor, was Matt. Your cook? They don't let two people have the same name on their vanity plates. Mrs. Houston, if this is true, then you probably ought to go to the police. Oh, no. Amy's been my servant for nearly 30 years. If she's trying to kill me, I intend to learn the reason why. Mrs. H., your home. What happened? I turned my back for two seconds and you disappeared. Why, I forgot something at the hospital, Amy. Well, you should have let me drive you. That would have been ironic, wouldn't it? Why? Tell me, Amy, would you have given me a chance to get in the car this time? As opposed to what other time? A time about six months ago. What time is that? I'd like to go down and have a look at your car. Well, now, Miss H., I don't think it's a good idea for you to do so much driving around in your condition. Oh, I didn't say I wanted to go anywhere. I want to go down and look at it. I want to stand right in front of it and stare at it so I can get over this fear and won't have to wear these sunglasses anymore. And then, Amy, we'll tend to other matters. There it is. Well, right there in front of us. But that car is dark brown. That's not your sky blue sedan. I know. This is a new car. Oh, I see. You thought it best to get rid of the old one. I didn't get rid of it. It was stolen. Stolen? When? The same day as your accident. How convenient. I just finished reporting it to the police when we got the call saying you'd been struck by that hit-and-run driver. You mean your car was stolen before I was hurt? Yeah. And you reported the theft to the police? They can verify that? Well, yes. They never did find the car. And I could never figure out how it got stolen in the first place. Why not? Well, it was parked in the garage at Amber Oaks. It would have been difficult for anyone to get onto the grounds and across that lawn into the garage without being seen. Mm. Unless they came from the house. Oh, yes, but that would have been even more. Who was at the house that day? Well, it's see, Ramsey, the chauffeur. He was downtown with you. Ollie, the gardener. Anyone else? No one. Except Mr. Riley. Bert? He came in just around noon. What was he doing there? Oh, I don't know. I gave up trying to be sociable with him a long time ago. That man has got no emotion. He came over in the middle of the day? No, he was nosing around in my kitchen. I, I, I don't know what he wanted. Maybe it was the keys to your car. Now, why would Mr. Riley want to steal my car? He's a lawyer. So it was him. Mrs. H., are you sure you're okay? You're acting mighty strange. Amy, get back upstairs and start cooking. What? Rita and Bert were kind enough to find me this place. I think I ought to have them over for a cozy little apartment warming and a nice long talk. Oh, Mama, this fish is delicious. Mrs. Collins hasn't lost her touch one bit. How about you, Bert? You finding any bones? No, ma'am. You hoping maybe I might? Oh, Mama. Uh, I don't hope any such thing, Mother Houston. Cease taking that presumptuous familiarity with me, sir. Well, we can sure tell Mama's made her recovery, can't we? Mm -hmm. Is my estate back in my hands now? I've uh, started the proceedings. How much did you make from the sale of Amber Oaks? I made nothing. The estate grossed close to $2 million. Where's the money now? Well, I had to make certain investments for tax purposes. He invested in a new shopping center. They're planning to build at a very good location here in town, Mama. My 
beautiful Amber Oaks has gone to finance a shopping center. Well, it wasn't an easy decision, of course, but it was like pouring money down the drain to keep up such an enormous estate. My money. Yes, but... But yours someday, is that it? It was impractical. Impractical. Do you know what you are, Bert Riley? A Snopes. One of those low-life peasants William Faulkner used to write about, whose grasp goes no higher than his wallet. You are a barnacle on the keel of society. You've no culture, no refinement, no past. You know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Mama! And as for you, young lady, have you forgotten your heritage? You are descended from cavaliers, from the aristocracy. And you go and marry this social climbing ambulance chaser who's got the ethics of a ferret. I don't have to stand for this. Oh, yes, you do, Bert Snopes Riley. And you'll have to go on standing for it as long as I'm alive. However much you might wish it otherwise. Mama, what are you saying? Oh, Bert knows what I'm saying, don't you, Bert? <laughs> Mrs. H, can I clear the dishes now? Yes. Hmm. Well, Mr. Riley sure stormed out of here in a bad mood. Mrs. Riley didn't seem none too happy either. Mrs. H, were you implying that you think Mr. Riley tried to kill you? How do you know that? Well, that's what it sounded like. Were you eavesdropping? No, ma'am. I couldn't help but hear every word from the kitchen. Oh, I'm sorry, Amy. Forgive me. No, oh, there's no point in starting to apologize at your age. You will help me, won't you? Of course, Mrs. H. I always have. I mean, now, you're my only witness. You're the only other one who knows Bert tried to kill me. I know that. You said you saw him that day. Yes, but he stole your car, don't you see? And tried to run me down with it. I saw the car, Amy. I saw the license plate with the word Matt on it. You think it was my car? I know it. We'll go down to the police right now and press the charges. Well, I don't know how in the world you're going to prove it. I've just got to find a way, that's all. Oh, I gave myself away tonight. He knows I know. It's only a matter of time before he makes another attempt. Well, I'm sure he won't do any such thing. Don't you believe me? He's after our money. That's why I married Rita. But you have no proof. He tried to kill me once and he's going to try again. I know he will. And how am I going to stop him? It has been said that we prefer misfortune to non-existence. Eleanor Houston certainly suffered the former and now seems faced with the possibility of the latter. Did her subconscious keep her paralyzed all those months for her own protection? Has she indeed gone from the frying pan into the fire? Or are her suspicions merely another example of her cantankerous nature? We'll pursue the matter to its surprising conclusion when I return with Act Three. one expert on the subject, very few unique crimes. Most have been committed before and will be committed again. Certainly the attempted murder of an older member of a family by a younger for the purpose of securing an early inheritance is no newcomer to the annals of wrongdoing. But the details of our present story make it somewhat unique. In the first place, we cannot be sure murder was even attempted. But assuming it was, the would-be murderer has not been arrested. In fact, he is not even suspected. And the victim has nothing to go on but a shard of memory and a bit of circumstantial evidence. I'm scared, Amy. For the first time in my life, I am scared. You want me to call Dr. James? Oh, what good will a doctor do me? No, I need proof. 
Some kind of proof that will put Bert Riley in jail. Mrs. H., everybody knows you don't like the man. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, I know you're upset by that sale of Amber Oaks, but that was an error in judgment, not a crime. It was no error. Well, I'm sure if he did anything illegal, your lawyers will discover it. Are you patronizing me? Now, I won't stand for that. Mrs. H., let me call the doctor. Out, leave. I don't need you to live here hovering over me. I'm not an invalid, and I won't be treated like one. I'm descended from the heroes of the Confederacy. And I'm perfectly capable of fending for myself and, and protecting myself. Mother Houston. Hello, Bert. Oh, this is an unexpected surprise. Well, what are you doing here at my office? I want to talk to you. A private talk. Just the two of us. Oh, certainly. Uh, and Sally, hold on my calls, will you? Now. Now, we won't be disturbed. I want to talk to you about last night. Last night? You do remember you and Rita came to dinner, don't you? It was a very lovely evening. A very lovely evening? Why, oh, I know there was a little unpleasantness, but that's to be expected in families. Bert, hmm? I want to make a deal with you. A deal? I want you to divorce Rita. I'm not sure I'm following this. I want you to divorce my daughter. Is my language too straightforward for your legal mind to comprehend? Now, you know, I'd do anything I could for you, but... Uh... You mean anything you could to me, don't you? Well, no, I... You I... listen to me, Bert Riley. I know it was you who stole Mrs. Collins' car. You followed me downtown, and you tried to run me over. Once I'm gone, my fortune goes to Rita, and we both know that means it's as good as yours. But I'm not easy to kill, and I don't plan to die, not for a long, long time. These, uh speculations of yours are totally unfounded. I don't know what you're talking about. Like I said, I am willing to make a deal. You divorce Rita, get out of our family, get out of this town, and I won't go to the police. The police? To press a charge of attempted murder. Is that really what you think? It's true, isn't You've it? You've never liked me, Mrs. Houston. I don't have a distinguished family... No bloodline I can trace back. But I've worked my way up from nothing. And I hope that someday I'll earn your respect. My respect? What were you doing at Amber Oaks the day of my accident? I wasn't there. Mrs. Collins saw you. Mm, she must be mistaken. She said she spoke to she you. She must be mistaken. Admit you tried to kill me. The only thing I'm killing at the moment is time. And, Mrs. Houston, in my profession, that is a valuable commodity. I'm afraid you will have to excuse me. You're going to try to kill me again, aren't you? Aren't you? When, Bert Riley? When? Come in. Mama. Can I come in, Rita? Of course. What's the matter? I've got to talk to you. Well, can you stay for dinner? Bert will be home in a couple of hours. I don't want him to see me. And he mustn't know I've been here. Do you understand? I've just been to see him. Well, what's wrong? You're perspiring. Rita, darling, I've got to ask you a favor. As a mother to her daughter. To her one and only loveliest child. You see, I dismissed Mrs. Collins. What? Oh, she's an impossible old woman. But I know I can trust you. Trust me? I want you to come live with me. Come back. We'll fix up the apartment. It'll be just like living at Amber Oaks again. Oh, well, not quite, of course. But we could make it like old times. Mama, what are you talking about? You want me to leave Bert? There. You see, what a clever girl you are. Yes, that's exactly it. I can't do that. Of course you can. You must. I'll call Mrs. Collins and try to patch things up. No. But I can't leave Bert. 
Why not? He doesn't love you. He does so. I need you, Rita. I'm all alone. And I'm in danger. I'm in terrible danger. Your husband tried to kill me. Bert? Yes. That accident was no accident. He stole Amy's car and he tried to run me down. And he'll try again. He wants our money. That's why he married you. Mama, stop it. You have put me down all of my life, and I am not going to stand for it anymore. Rita? Never have you given me credit for anything. Oh, no, darling, that's not true. Why do you hate Bert so much? So what if he doesn't have a fine pedigree like our our illustrious family? The important thing is he's ambitious and he works hard. He spends 15 hours a day at his office. Yes, to avoid having to spend time with you. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean that. We spend time together. We spend enough time together. But I'm going to have a baby. <gasps> what? I wanted to tell you last night. You are pregnant? Marrying Bert was my decision. And getting pregnant was my decision. I'm living my own life now. So stop trying to interfere. Do you understand me? I, I do try to understand, Rita. I do. Oh, but you're my last hope. No one believes me. I'm sorry. I'll go now. Oh, please don't tell Bert I was here. Don't tell him I told you anything. For your own safety. Mrs. Collins? Amy? Please be here. Please. I need you. I'm afraid. Amy? She's gone. The thing is gone. I'm alone. Oh, what am I going to do? Honey, I'm home. Oh, Bert, I'm so glad you're home. Oh, I need a drink. What's the matter with you? I'm worried about Mama. No? What's wrong now? She came over this afternoon. I told her we were expecting a baby. Why'd she come here? It doesn't matter. Honey, what did she say to you? I wish she didn't hate you so much. She has this fantasy that you're trying to kill her. Oh? Oh. Uh, if you ask me, I think her accidents have addled her brain. She told me she fired Mrs. Collins. What? Oh, they had a fight over something, and Mama sent her packing. Maybe I should go spend the night with her. Oh. No. Now she can take care of herself. But she's all alone in that apartment. What if she has another accident? <laughs> I know someone is in this room. It's only me, Mother Houston. Bert. I just came by to see how you're getting on. It's three o'clock in the morning. I know. When I left Rita, she was sleeping very soundly. She didn't even stir. How, How did you get in here? I took the liberty of having an extra key made when we rented you the apartment. What, what do you want? Well, I thought we might talk about that deal you proposed this afternoon. No. It's as good a time as any. No, I, I, I don't want to talk about it now. Mother Houston, you asked me a question in my office. I feel I should give you an answer. What question? You asked me to admit I tried to kill you. Yes, Mother Houston, I did. Don't call me Mother Houston. It's all going to be academic anyway in a minute. What are you going to do? I'm going to succeed where I failed before. I know I could wait and let nature take its course, but that might take years. Mrs. Collins? She's not here. Of course she is. She's right in the next room. That's not what you told Rita. Rita told you I went to see her. Rita tells me everything. She trusts me. 
Now, why don't you lie back down? What are you going to do? Smother you with a pillow. Oh. It won't leave any marks. It won't raise any suspicions. No. You are so old. Why do you want to go on living? What's the point? That's, you'd better wait, Bert Riley. I went to my lawyer's this afternoon. What for? When I came home after seeing you and Rita and realized I was completely alone, I did the one thing I could do. I, I went to my lawyer's and I made out a new will. You're not leaving your estate to Rita? Oh, no. Well, that won't work. We'll simply contest the will. You don't have to do that, Bert. I am leaving everything to you. Me? As soon as I die, you'll get the entire Houston estate. All quite legally. Of course, it's going to look very suspicious. Everyone knows I despised you. Questions are bound to be asked, aren't they? A great many questions. Nothing can be proven. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh. That's very clever. All right, then. I will have to let nature take its course. Oh. But I'll get it eventually, won't I? Because you don't dare change that will back. Well, good night, Mother Houston. No. No, I don't dare change it back. What? Don't worry, Mrs. H. He's gone. Amy? Oh, Amy, what are you doing here? Oh, you know I couldn't leave you. Did you just come back? Oh, no. I came back several hours ago. I was going to greet you in the morning with a nice breakfast. So you were in your room? Yes. And it's a shame they don't make buildings the way they used to. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I am afraid I heard every word Mr. Riley said. Well, what are you standing there for like a dumbstruck schoolgirl? <laughs> Call the police. I already have. Edward Dahlberg once noted that most of man's acts are contrary to his own best interests. He spoils his own good fortune because he cannot wait for it. Had Bert Riley been content to wait, he could be a rich man today. Instead of behind bars. But we are what we are, and all too often we find love is at war with personality. I'll return with a final word in a moment. A final word on personality. Bert Riley almost succeeded in his second attempt to kill Eleanor Houston. And one of his biggest allies was the old woman herself. Her domineering and melodramatic nature served to obscure from Amy and Rita the very real danger she faced. But at the crucial moment, it was her personality which also saved her. That and a bit of luck. Our cast included Mary Jane Higby, Joan Shea, Russell Horton, and Jada Rowland. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I dislike to disturb you at home, especially on the Sabbath. That's all right. I did call your office, but there was no answer. I don't mind, Alexandra. Uh, how can I help you? Help me? I... I'm afraid no one can help me now. What are you saying? Yes, because, you see, I broke the commandment, thou shalt not kill. Alexandra. I have killed. I have taken a life, a human life. Is this you, Alexandra Edison? I have shot and killed Mr. Martin K. Beasley. Uh, Alexander, don't do anything. Don't touch anything. I'll be right there. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater 
for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.